Hello and welcome back. Quantum integration again. Today we're going to be looking at the integral from uh, 0 to infinity 1 over 1 plus x to the 4. Um, this without limits is actually quite challenging to do with ordinary maths but with this limit uh, with contour integration it's not actually that bad at all. So we're going to examine how to do this. Uh, I can't remember what lecture we're on at the moment with the, when, whether we've done similar kind of stuff but uh, just in case uh, uh, we haven't mentioned a few things I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna put a lot of detail again on this video. Okay um, the function we're going to consider is simply 1 over 1 plus z to the 4 dz over a contour gamma and the contour gamma because of the limits being 0 to infinity we're going to use the standard semicircular contour uh, which we used I think in the past uh, when I can't remember now what uh, video we've done I think we've done the cos of uh, x over 1 plus x to the 4 or something like that I can't quite remember now so here it is Standard semicircle, center at the origin, on the top half, something which looks like that. And um, is uh, the radius is r, so that's r there and minus r. It will run in, a, in an anti-clockwise direction. Here it goes, that's our gamma. Uh, actually, I'm going to put the gamma somewhere else for a reason. I'm going to put the gamma here. It's because I noticed something on the denominator there. And let's label the curved bit, the semicircle, as little gamma. Okay, so this is now our counter and that we're going to use. And the next thing, of course, we're going to use the residue theorem. So we really need to find the residues of this function uh, f of z. Uh, uh, which uh, lie inside gamma. So first of all, I don't know if you can see, we need to solve the equation z uh, to the 4 plus 1 is equal to uh, to 0 um, and I don't know whether we can see that there's going to be uh, two simple poles there's actually four poles in total of course it's uh, roots of unity and they are at uh, uh, e to the i pi over 4 is radius 1 so e to the i pi over 4 e to the 3 pi over 4. This is going to be symmetrically. These are of course outside so we don't really care. I'll mark them nevertheless. 5 pi over 4 i and e to the i 7 pi over 4. Uh, just very very quickly I mean if you can't uh, see or you need just a, a little reminder from your from a further mass is z to the 4 plus 1 is equal to 0. z to the 4 is equal of course to um, uh, negative 1 and of course we're going to write now the z to the 4 as uh, modulus 1 and uh, this is going to be of course uh, e to the i pi plus multiples of 2 pi like this uh, factorize your i pi on the other side so it's going to give you uh, 2k plus 1 still z to the 4 and when you of course you're finding your z is going to be of course uh, e to the i pi over 4 2k plus 1 so of course if uh, for if k is equal to 0 you're going to get of course the e to the i pi over 4 which we got in there if k is equal to 1 the 3 pi over 4 and so on so you're going to get uh, all the way around the circle these are equally spaced every kind of uh, this is 45 degrees there and every 90 degrees you got another one of those so only those of only uh, two of those four poles are inside big gamma so we need to find the residues for each of them so that's the next step uh, residue of the function f f is of course 1 over 1 plus z to the 4 um, and let's say at e to the i pi over 4 I left it as, a, as an exponential uh, is of course using the standard formula the limit as z tends to e to the i pi over 4 and then it's of course z minus e to the i pi over 4 times your f of z where f of z is of course this thing here 
Now, normally we would need to factorize this and we can't factorize it uh, because of course it's going to be z minus e to the i power of 4 times z minus e to the 3 pi over 4 and so on. Those four quantities in there and then cancel one and then substitute e to the i pi over 4 in the rest. Uh, but it's going to be quite messy and quite tricky. So, of course, I'm expecting there as it is if I try to take the limit to be 0 over 0. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule straight away in this expression. Uh, um, I don't really need to write it. Uh, I, I, I hope you can see that this is, I can write it like this, no problem. So it's zero over zero at the moment, it will be. So using L'Hopital's, not taking limit yet. Z minus E to the I pi over four. And if I differentiate top and bottom, the top is going to give me, of course, one, just the Z and the bottom is going to give me four Z to the power of uh, three, which is very, very simple. So that's going to be, um, 1 over 4 e to the 3 pi over 4 i which I can write I guess as 1 quarter e to the minus 3 pi over 4 i and uh, I'll probably leave it like that and I've got one more poll to, to work out that's the one which is at uh, e to the 3 pi over 4 so the residue of f at e to the 3 pi over 4 i. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Limit z tends to e to the 3 pi over 4 i. And uh, I'm going to write this as a, as a fraction like this because it's easier. Uh, and again, I'm going to use L'Hopital's for this. Uh, z minus e to the uh, 3 pi over 4i over 1 plus z to the 4 close bracket it's a 0 over 0 now and therefore we need to differentiate it limit z tends to e to the 3 pi over 4i um, and now if we differentiate we're going to get 1 over 4z Cube. This is exactly the same as there, but just the different uh, z to substitute in. And if we put z is equal to e to the 3 pi over 4, we're going to get 1 over 4 e to the 9 pi over 4 i. Let's simplify that a little bit. It has a, a whole lot of 2 pi in it, so um, I can write it as 1 over 4 e to the a quarter pi just took uh, two pi off this which is exactly the same and i'm going to write on the top as one quarter e to the minus uh, pi over four i lost the i there pi over four i okay so these are now the two the residues of the two poles which are inside my gamma uh, i just want to uh, write them here perhaps uh, or somewhere so i don't lose them um, and then con continue with my, my work. I don't want to lose that, of course. So these are my two poles. Let me circle them because with my luck, probably I'll uh, rub them off. It's this bit and this bit here. And I can clear the rest of the board. As you can see, I'm trying to use a sponge today. I still like my cloth. My cloth is much, much nicer, much, much smoother. But I do have about four or five sponges in the start. I don't really use them. Okay, so but the but the residue theorem, if I integrate in a clockwise direction around big gamma, I should get two pi i times the sum of the residues of my f inside gamma, which of course the sum just those two added together. Um, I'm gonna write it. Uh, uh, can I manipulate it more? I guess not. I will leave it and if I, if I need a bit of a further tidy up, I'll do it uh, at the very end. So it's one quarter e to the minus three pi over four i plus one quarter e to the minus pi over four i. That's very annoying. It's in the middle of the board, so I'm going to need that part of the board to do stuff. And uh, maybe I need to write it again. I'll write it again somewhere else. Uh, so I'll write it up here, perhaps. Actually, let's leave it for the time being and let's see. Hopefully, it will not interfere with our workings. Okay. So the plan is now to say as follows. Okay. So if we integrate um, from minus r to r, 
So we're integrating in sections plus the integral around the semicircle, little gamma, curly bracket, like this, f of z dz. We should get for that equal to what we got up there, by the residue theorem, of course. Um, so our plan, we're expecting this uh, integral, this real integral, to come from the minus r to r as we let r go to infinity. And hopefully we, we expect the contribution of the arc as r gets to infinity, as we're blowing this picture up forever, to become zero. So, so long as we show that this goes to zero, as r goes to infinity, then we can put minus infinity to infinity. We got an even integrand and therefore we can, uh, we can wrap this question up. So let's go from there and see what happens. So we're going to do an approximation uh, or an estimation rather. So this is standard, but I will do it in detail because I don't remember whether I have actually shown you how to do this kind of stuff. So this is the integral around gamma of f of z dz modded. Okay, we're going to need a parameterization of this curve. It's of course... Um, standard around gamma little gamma ma z is of course r that's the radius e to the i theta ma dz is going to be i r e to the i theta d theta and uh, it's going to go from theta is equal to zero to theta is equal to pi so from zero to pi so this now this integral will be parameterized modulus of uh, from 0 to pi and we're having on the top 1 over 1 plus uh, we're putting uh, r e to the i theta to the power of 4 it's going to be r to the 4 e to the 4 i theta and because I'm a little bit squeezed for space I'm going to write my dz uh, I'm going to get to take a ride on the top of this so it's going to be i r e to the i theta D theta. So all I've done is I just put my stuff in close mod. Okay, so the modulus of this integral is equal to the modulus of that integral. Uh, now we're going to use the fact that I'm and as, again I'm going to show it in real first of all. So if you have an integral from a to b, definite integral f of x dx, the modulus of that is always less or equal to the modulus from a to b of f of x now modded dx and it works pretty much the same way in, in a, with complexes so long as it's parameterized so i will avoid actually doing things such as that um uh, gamma f of z dz okay is less or equal to when we're taking the mod inside now uh, we have to be a little bit careful because um I don't want to um, complicate things, but it should be, of course, something like that because this has something to do with the with the length of the of the curve. I mean, if we have here, for example, um, let's say one one modded dz that represents this particular integral again around gamma is the length of gamma, or if you're having limits a to b let's say that will represent the length of the the path whatever path it, it is from a to b so uh, you can think of it if it's parameterized as the real case up here so i said the modulus what this inequality says it says the modulus of the definite integral is less than equal to the definite integral of the modulus of its integrand okay uh, so all i'm going to do on the next line is to move the moduli and use this inequality so zero to pi and now this inequality goes on the inside i uh, i r e to the i theta and then one plus r to the four e to the four i theta close mod and then the theta does not need mods of course now uh, so we are so far what the hell is that line uh that's the modulus sorry i thought it was a line separating my board there to do something okay so this is where we are at the moment uh, then of course we're going to use the standard um, modulus inequality which work for real and complexes mod z over mod w is of course the mod of z over the mod of w all good and 
the mod of z times w is the mod of z times the mod of w and because i don't want to be rewriting a lot of stuff here so i'm going to say basically that's the modulus of the top over the modulus at the bottom i'm writing it in red and lose the moduli from the outside or rather the modulus lines from the outside and then if you look on the numerator i have multiplicative quantities okay so i can actually take individual moduli on the top using the second fact so the mod of i the mod of r the mod of i theta and but the bottom one can't because of this plus at the moment so this of course will become on my next line equal integral zero to pi the modulus of i is of course one the modulus of i is just r who does who doesn't even need the modulus a positive quantity and e to the i theta is of course has modulus one i will just put a line for that in a second for the time being let me write it and at the bottom i've got one plus r to the four four i theta close modulus d theta of course anything which has this form i'm not gonna need any of this let me just clear the board a little bit e to the i something real modded is always equal to one because of course this is just something like in causes and signs so cause of something real plus i sign of the same real thing of course whatever that is sorry i'm like i'm writing it very informally that will definitely be one because of course cos squared plus sine squared uh, is one square rooting it is of course still one so this is just a standard thing that comes up a lot in in this kind of uh, uh, estimations and therefore we should be familiar with this uh, from now on so this is now the e to the i theta justified and now we're going to use um, an inequality which again is very very common this type of work is um, part of the uh, i would imagine part of the uh, triangle in equality kind of family and says the mod of z plus w is greater or equal to the mod of z minus the mod of w and uh, really what we want is to write it upside down you have to be a little bit careful here because when we flick it upside down this inequality might not work for a simple reason um, it's because uh, if it's negative if this turn out to be negative when you're flipping it you it will not quite uh, be the same uh, so we're gonna have a little bit of a problem but uh, at the moment without loss of generality we can swap z and w in such a way so the mod of z take away the mod of w is positive so here basically we're saying um, i haven't actually used it yet it doesn't really matter how we write this one plus that or that plus one is it's exactly the same but this is now the inequality that again is used an awful lot in this estimations and you really need to be aware of it so i'm going to use it in this denominator so i'm treating it as one over and you can think that's being my z and this quantity here being my w so another inequality line here this is less or equal to zero to oops i was about to write to pi here is this pi zero to pi r and i have one minus r to the four modded e to the four i theta if it bothers you this is symmetrical let me actually write it the other way around it makes no difference eventually as r tends to infinity um, you can think of that being your z that's what i was just explaining up there so we can actually write it as the mod it looks a bit better as well like this e to the 4i theta minus i'm even writing the modulus of one which is a bit stupid d theta okay so this is by using this line very important line you need to really learn this because it, it does come up a lot in this type of estimations um so to take me from here to here and then of course let's create some space up there we're almost done with this uh, estimation we practically at the end uh, i need to write less or equal of course here because there was less or equal along the lines um, and i can because now i have this in multiplication i can put individual moduli here so the mod of r to the four times the mod of e to the four i theta minus one so let me just write a, li a line for that uh, so zero to pi 
R on the top, and now we're gonna have R to the four, E to the four, I theta. Let's lose that modulus around the minus one, around the one because it looks very stupid. Okay, um, E to the E to the I real because four theta is of course real. This has modulus one, so we can throw it away. So this and this is positive, and therefore we don't need moduli. R R to the four minus one d theta. 0 to pi. This is now independent of um, theta. We can write it outside the integral. R over R to the 4 minus 1. 0 to pi 1 d theta. And of course this integral now will produce pi. So we're going to have this as being now equal to pi R R to the 4 minus 1. Which of course is of the order uh, the pi is just a constant, all of these kind of things can, uh, we can ignore. It's r over r cubed, so of the order 1 over r cubed, which clearly r as r tends to infinity. Okay, as we're blowing this uh, this picture uh, uniformly outwards, so of course this will also go to the, to the infinity. Uh, 1 over r cubed goes to 0, as r tends to infinity. So, and we've shown that R, the, the actual value of this uh, integral around gamma, little gamma, okay, is less or equal to zero in the limiting case as R tends to infinity. So we actually essentially have shown that this has zero contribution in the limiting case. So all we're going to do now is just wrap the answer up. So we can say now as R tends to infinity, the only thing that we got is this uh, straight line segment along the x-axis, but of course this would have gone to plus and minus infinity. So we have minus infinity to infinity. Um, and uh, along the x-axis, uh, z is of course uh, the same as x and the dz will be dx. So we're going to get 1 plus x to the 4 dx. And now we need to tidy this is our answer and uh, this has to be complex um, or rather all purely imaginary because we've got a nine there and we know of course the answer to that cannot be complex so uh, what can we do now to uh, this particular one uh, perhaps take the quarter out so that's going to give me a half so that's taking the quarters uh, a quarter pi i and then inside i'm going to have e to the minus three pi over 4i plus e to the minus pi over 4i and now i have to switch this into trig bits so um is equal to a half pi i this one is going to be the cos of 3 pi over 4 the minus of course we don't care it's even and the sign is um, odd so we're gonna pull it at the front minus i sine 3 pi over 4 plus e to the minus pi over 4 is again the same as the cos of um, uh, minus pi over 4 minus pi oh, sorry what am I writing uh, the cos of pi over 4 and uh, the this is gonna be minus uh, and we've got uh, minus i sine uh, 3 pi, no, 3 pi, pi over 4, I beg your pardon, pi over 4, and uh, this will give us a half pi i, the cos of 3 pi over 4 is of course uh, minus root 2 over 2, um, the sine of 3 pi over 4 is positive root 2 over 2. So it's going to be minus root 2 over 2i. That's this one. The cos of pi over 4 is simply root 2 over 2. That's good news because the real bits will cancel. And the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 positive, but we got a minus. So we're going to have minus root 2 over 2i. So first of all, these two quantities will cancel and all together we're going to have a half pi i on the other side and these are both minus so it's going to be a whole of negative root 2 i 
uh, what does that give us? Uh, the i times i is minus 1 and the minus gives me a plus so that takes care of the i and the negative and all I'm going to get is a root 2 over a root 2 over 2 pi root 2 over 2 just checking pi uh, what's this uh, answer uh, this answer is of course from minus infinity to infinity uh, we want it as 0 to infinity. I hope we can just uh, state it without, because I, I don't want to rub the board. This is an even integrand, and therefore, if we go from 0 to infinity, it's going to be exactly half of this answer, and therefore, the answer to this particular integral is 1 quarter uh, root 2 pi. Okay, and I hope you followed it. Uh, and you enjoyed it and uh, uh, i will see you very very soon and as per usual who's laughing now <laughs>